So where is one to turn if in search of knowledge? I think a lot of uh, a lot of us would be led to say science that we should look to um, what the scientific method has been able to show us or reveal to us, uncover for us about the nature uh, of nature. But then, what if what I want to know about concerns uh, not the way things are, but the way things should be? How ought the universe to work? And, you know, a, a scientific attitude would be to say that uh, the universe simply is and has no moral uh, valence one way or the other. Uh, so it ought not be any way in particular. There is no good at work in the scientific universe, the universe as viewed through the scientific lens. Broadly speaking, I guess science is about reason and evidence, empirical evidence. So, you know, we use logic and mathematics to measure the movement of bits of matter, uh, points of geometric space, uh, points of uh, geometric density through space, I guess. Um, so the universe that science studies is a sort of sterilized, neutralized, um, valueless nature where there aren't any purposes, there aren't any ideas at work, it's just bits of matter interacting in empty, uh, empty space. This doesn't seem to provide me with an answer to the type of knowledge that I'm that I'm after, and so I look elsewhere for knowledge. And not only do I look elsewhere for knowledge, I look for a new way of knowing. Perhaps it's not new at all. Maybe it's ancient. It's a participatory epistemology that finds consciousness and being or knowing and being bound up with one another in the same ongoing process of genesis, self-creation. So subject and object, psyche and matter, uh, the physical world and spiritual world, the soul world, they're intertwined, they're coiled up with one another, far too uh, interpermeated for us to easily distinguish what is inside and what is outside. You know, we, we have physical science, right, and we say it, it maps the external world, but it's all based on numbers. Are numbers in the physical world as... Um, physical science conceives of it? Not, I mean, I don't think so. So we're dealing with something ideal, something mental, something intelligent, and not sensible in physics. So we never really have access to the raw uh, stuff of the world that the scientist uh, assumes is there completely of itself independent of any observer or any mind or uh, any experiencer. <clears throat> I don't think that that sort of situation is possible. So knowledge never was a disinterested, modest witness as Donna Harway uh, has put it. 
the scientist never was outside of the natural process that they were trying to understand and study and experiment. I mean, obviously, in an experiment, you're setting up a certain um, system of variables and so are able to at least falsify an, a theoretical picture of uh, the relationships which you're trying to measure. You can't necessarily prove a particular set of theoretical relationships as true of, of being the case about reality, but you can at least disprove wrong uh, theories. So in the case of an experiment, the subject, the scientist, is obviously in interfering with uh, the object or the world. Um, but even when you're supposedly merely observing, you're still thinking, and your thoughts are part of your perceptual experience. Uh, you know, for the I, for the transcendental ego in the Kantian sense, or the Husserlian sense, thoughts are appearances just as much as th things or objects or, you know, sensations. So the phenomenological world, the life world, includes both soul and body. Both our inner experiences, our feelings and desires, um, and thoughts, and our outer experiences, our sensations, and our perceptions. Uh, phenomenology sees all of that as part of a single field of ongoing intelligible and sensible, uh, you know, material, I guess, just flowing through time. I mean, material, phenomenology is dealing with material in the sense of that which arises, you know, the immediate givenness of experience. But then there's something left over, right? There's the noumenon, the noose, there's this I, there's the thinking thing, which isn't the thought that arises, it's, it's behind the thought, responsible for the thought, and somehow also for the feeling and the sensation. And now it begins, this all begins to sound somewhat um, idealistic, some sort of absolute idealism where or, you know, like Fichte, where the entire natural world reduces to the eye, is a product of the eye's creative will, creative power, just projected out of it. That doesn't seem quite right. Uh, the eye doing the thinking is somehow related to a larger unseen universe, I would suggest. And in that unseen universe, beings, I beings, selves of higher capacity, higher intelligence, stronger will, and deeper moral responsibility are making decisions, just as we make decisions on a slightly less intense plane. But through our own eye, with, our, with its limited knowledge and its um, you know, limited sensory experience of the world, is, is connected to these higher beings. And so our eye is able to bring unity to our own perceptual experience, our own phenomenological life world, but only through some sort of an act of will or faith because we can't see through our eyes or hear through our ears or feel with our, uh, our hands the world of ideas which and ideals values which the eye the intellect the noose uh, participates in we can't see the world of ideas with our eyes, with our physical senses. 
we intuit this world with our intellect. And it is a kind of vision nonetheless. The mind is a perceptual organ. And ideas are to the mind as light is to the eyes. The heart is a perceptual organ. When we feel the world, we're feeling the interiority of other beings. And I think, you know, for human beings, we feel another human being more deeply because we're more related to a human being biologically than say we feel the inside of a tree or the inside of a beaver or uh, the inside of a mockingbird uh, or salamander. It's harder to feel the inside, but we still can. Um, and it's made easier because there's a less intense interiority, there's a less intense beingness in a salamander than in an owl or in a dolphin. Um, and you know, how do, I, how do we measure this intensity of, of beingness, of, of feeling, of consciousness? Uh, we, well, there's no quantitative measure, you know, but I think you can sort of feel what I mean when I make a distinction between the intensity of the consciousness of a dolphin and of uh, a spider, let's say. And in the case of human beings, we feel the interiority of other human beings through a sort of sympathy or empathy. This is an organ of perception, the heart. Uh, feeling or perceiving some aspect of reality which isn't visible to the standard uh, you know, exterior uh, senses, the five senses. We have more than five senses, right? Or uh, I'm suggesting. Nietzsche writes in uh, Thus Spoke Zarathustra that behind your thoughts and feelings stands a mighty commander, an unknown sage. He is called Self. He also writes, you say I, and you are proud of this word. But greater than this, although you will not believe in it, is your body and its great intelligence, which does not say I, but performs I. So whatever this I is, it's participating fully in the sensory world. Uh, and the eye or the spirit is um, the eternal principle at work in this temporal universe. You could say that the exterior universe and the body are in some sense um, inside of the soul. It's the, and that, you know, our thoughts and desires and, and feelings and sensations of the universe, or what the universe is inside of. But we've never known or had access to a universe other than the one which arises in our thoughts, feelings, and sensations in our soul. Um, so this universe, or the body, the corporal natural world is inside of the soul. And the soul, our thoughts, feelings, and sensations, uh, our will, our ideas, our images, this is inside of the spirit, the I. And the I is this sort of omnipresent uh, knowingness, omnipresent love or interconnectivity, and uh, a sort of power also, which pervades all things, and it has a sort of ultimate will. a lot to participate in. Uh, it seems impossible that we should not be 